Hey guys, welcome to Great Learning. Python is one of the top programming languages in the world today. It is extremely popular among hundreds of thousands of users worldwide. Of course, there are numerous reasons for this, but did you know that Python offers some of the most simple and easy to work with data structures among all the programming languages that are out there? Well, this is extremely important as data structures serve to be the foundational concepts that govern all the products that are built using these storage structures. It becomes super important for you as a learner to ensure that you break all of these concepts down into simple concepts and then master them. Keeping exactly that in mind, we here at Great Learning have come up with this short video discussing about data structures in Python. Well, what are we waiting for? Roll the intro. Before we get started, I want to introduce you to Great Learning Academy. This is a free initiative by Great Learning where you can have access to over 200 plus courses with 1000 plus hours of free content on all of the trending high demand domains, absolutely free. Register now to complete the course and get your free certificate of completion as well. Check out the link in the description box of the video below for more details. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. This is done to make sure you do not miss out on any of the new updates or video releases from Great Learning. And of course, guys, if you enjoy this video, show us some love and do like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, right? So make sure you share this video with your friends, colleague and everyone who can make use of it. And at the end of it, make sure to comment on the video if you have any queries or any suggestions and I'll be more than happy to respond to all of your comments. All right, guys. So to check out the agenda on this session, data structures in Python, we're going to start this out by taking a look at uh, what data structure is. We need to understand what a data structure is before moving on to understanding the various types of data structures that we have here in Python, right? So once we go on to understand the various types of data structures in Python, the next thing that we're going to take a look at is the built-in data structures. Once we understand the built-in data structures, we'll also take a quick look at what user-defined data structures are, how they use them, uh, well, you know, why is it called user-defined, where is it used most popularly, and a lot more, right? So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing that you really have to think about whenever the term data structure comes into your head is what is a data structure? Because it is a term that gets thrown around the entire world of programming. And if you're a non-technical person who has ever gone for a technical interview, either for a programming job or something along the lines of that, data structures are extremely important for interviews. And why is that, right? Let's answer these questions. First of all, what is a data structure? A data structure is basically a way of how we can store data in a structured manner. In fact, the answer lies in the name itself, right? So data structures not only provide a very good and an efficient way to actually store your data, but also whenever it is required, right, that is when it shows its power. That is when it brings out all the efficiency that I just spoke about now. And then when you think about it, having a structured way of approaching things, not only in the world of programming, but works everywhere, right? Think about organizing your books uh, in a bookshelf or maybe your kitchen cabinet, right? Uh, but then when you, when you again think about data structures as a whole, when you come to programming languages, there's varieties of data structures, right? Uh, in your book uh, rack, you'll only have books. There's a good chance. In your kitchen cabinet, you might have only stuff that's required for your kitchen, right? But in a data structure, when you're thinking about a programming language, your things will slightly change and there is a good chance that there can be a lot more things at play, right? Think about not only how to store data, but how to organize them, how to access them, and how efficient is this entire process of storing, organizing, and accessing going to be right? This uh, is what makes up a data structure. To give you an example, uh, you know, just like the book example that I just told you about, think about organizing fruits in a basket, right? Because this is exactly what uh, happens in our case as well, right? Look at your screen right now. You'll see a couple of bananas, apples, watermelons, and mangoes that are arranged in their own baskets, right? Now, if everything was jumbled and if I asked you to put it back like that, you can do it, right? Exactly. Uh, now, in the case of a data structure in Python, 
and what happens is the data that it sees is usually numbers or character data, right? Now, if it's an integer, it can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If it's a floating point number, it can be 3.14, 4.9, 6.9, 5.8 anything like that right and then of course if you have any sort of string data for example hi my name is Anirudh Rao right so uh, just similar to organizing these there also we each have baskets where if python sees a data which uh, happens to be either integer floating or anything like that it will automatically try to put it in these baskets that we have now to dive right into the details of it to understand what exactly is it that we're doing with respect to the data structures that are present uh, in python and many other programming languages ladies and gentlemen you have to think about two ways of how data structures are meant to be used and of course the purpose of it. First of all, you have built-in data structures and user-defined data structures. See, now built-in data structures as the name itself suggests, right? It comes built in with the programming languages. Uh, it talks about something fundamental. It talks about a scaffolding structure or it talks about an already ready syntax that you guys have to use uh, to just uh, ensure that, you know, your storage options are being met. And of course, whatever it is that you want to use the storage for, you have time to concentrate on those applications rather than breaking your head on how to store the data, right? So that's built-in data structures. Uh, User-defined data structures are some of these data structures which we require in a case where we have uh, uh, not just a lot of data, but sometimes you have a solution which will require you to take a non-linear approach of how you should not only store data, but process them and derive insights out of them. In those cases, right, user-defined data structures are very much useful. Now, if you take a look at all the built-in data structures and the user-defined data structures, especially we have in Python, uh, you'll see that the built-in data structures, of course, apart from the int, float, string, and all those, you'll see list, dictionary, tuple, and set. And then take a look at user-defined data structures. User-defined user data structures, I've given you four on the screen right now, but you can have any number of uh, user-defined data structures for that programming language, right? For example, Python itself has a lot more than four, but these four happen to be so, so popular that you guys have to know about them. So, all right, guys, now we will take a look at all the built-in data structures that we just uh, discussed, right? Now, if, uh, whenever the talk is about built-in data structures, the first question you really must ask yourself is what is a built-in data structure or why is it even called a built-in data structure, right? Now, a built-in data structure basically is present natively uh, in the Python library as well, right? Uh, so when you take a look at all these various, uh, uh, you know, built-in structures that we're discussing, be it lists, be it tuple, set, dictionary, whatever it is, uh, all of these are present directly uh, for usage, right? You really do not have to install anything on top of Python or, uh, you know, work with any sort of dependencies to work with these as well, right? Fantastic. Now, the first data structure that you see on your screen is lists. So what are lists? List, as the name itself suggests, you know, whenever you're trying to make a list of things, what are you trying to do? You are sequentially trying to organize something in an orderly fashion, or you're trying to arrange something in a fashion where uh, the next time you take a look at the list, you understand what's going on. Similarly, right, it's not the exact analogy, but similarly here as well, uh, with respect to list, we have a storage in the form of an array-like structure, right? Uh, with respect to list in Python, the advantage here is that every single element in the list, right, all, all of these positions are indexed. So if I wanted the first element, the second element, the last element, or any element that is present in an entire list, I can actually use its index position, its addressing, and eventually start picking that up, right? In fact, there's an example on your screen right now. We have a sample list here, uh, which contains of, uh, you know, all the types of data that we can have, right? We can have integers, we can have floating point numbers, and look at this, ladies and gentlemen, we can also have a, a string data type, right? And of course, all of these are completely uh, valid, and all of these are output as an actual list as well. So this is something you really have to know in terms of lists. The next thing that we're going to take a look at and discuss is dictionaries. Now, think about a dictionary at your home, right? Before even understanding what's present on the screen. If you take a look at a dictionary, if I have to search for a word in that dictionary, uh, how do I go about moving around the dictionary, right? If my word usually starts from S, I go to that index position, I open all the pages that start from S, and then I alphabetically start looking for the word, right? 
The working of dictionary in Python is also similar where we take the concept from the actual example that I just told you, right? So we have something called as key items and we have something called as the values that correspond to these key items, right? Uh, think about uh, structured data, right? Maybe your name, uh, your phone number and your con uh, and your email address and your Aadhaar card number, let's just say. Now, if you have to list all of these for your entire family members, uh, you will have it in an order or even if it's unordered, uh, you will have it, let's just say there are four people there, right? So you can pick up each one of the four as and when you require, right? Similarly, here in dictionaries, we have something called as a key and a key is basically associated with a value. So if you have to access the value, you can just look for the key and eventually the key is hooked up to the value where you can find out uh, the data that is stored uh, in the place that's mapped for that key, right? Uh, so if you're wondering about these pairings, how many pairings can we have or can they be accessed or can they be added as and when required? Of course, with respect to dictionaries, all these key value pairs can be added accessed, modified, and removed as and when you choose. That's a huge advantage here, right? Now, take a look at the example on your screen. Uh, in fact, here we have a dictionary which contains of two items. When I say two items, I'm meaning two key value pairs. The first uh, uh, the first item that we're talking about is basically an apple, but the key associated with respect to apple is first. The second item that we're talking about is ball, but the key associated with ball is in second, right? That's the output that you can see. So I hope we are clear with dictionaries. The next interest data structure that we're going to take a look at in Python has to be tuple. Now, ladies and gentlemen, tuple is literally the most used data structure we have in Python. Uh, now that we just took a look at lists, one thing you really have to understand about tuple is that the working is very, very similar to what the lists provide us. But then, but then ladies and gentlemen, there's a very important point, but here in, in terms of a tuple, you really cannot change uh, the value of that particular tuple when it is in execution or when it is underway. So, if I have a tuple called a sample tuple one, two, three, and then if I want to change it while it's executing, or if I want to change it and, uh, you know, just add in more details or, or remove elements as such, that is not possible. Why? Because tuple is an immutable data type. When I say immutable, basically it means uh, that uh, you cannot add any more data into that particular tuple. So if I have to create a tuple called one, two, three, four, instead of adding it to the sample tuple here, I'll create another tuple and add that particular value and discard the one that I have at hand, right? So the working is very similar uh, uh, to that of lists. And again, lists use square back brackets for all the people who want a shortcut to remember lists, sets, and dictionaries, right? When you guys are beginning, uh, a list uses a square bracket, a dictionary uses a flower bracket, and a tuple uses a round bracket, right? So I hope we're clear with these three data structures. Now, let's take a look at the fourth one, which again uses flower brackets, and this one is called as a set. Set uh, the name itself should definitely take you back to your school days where you might have learned about these concepts of uh, sets and how you should have an ordered collection of unique elements present, right? So if I have a set, uh, you know, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, the entire output of it will actually be one, two, three, four, five, six, right? That's how a set works. In a set, you cannot have repeated elements. Every single element that is present in a set should be 100% unique to each other. The right. In fact, look at the example on your screen right now. First set is the name of our set, of course. And again, similar to dictionaries, here we use flower braces as well. But the difference here is that we do not have key value pairs. If you had the same flower bracket structure where you had a key value pair, immediately that would become a dictionary. But since we don't have that and we have individual elements, you can take a look at it and you can think of it as a set, right? In fact, the example that I just spoke to you about is on the screen. One, two, three, four, four, and five. So four is repeated, right? Uh, but in the output, you can see that four is present only once. So no matter how many repeated elements or uh, you have in your set, once you try to perform operations or it, or once you try to actually store it in the form of a set and try to access the output of it, you will only have access to the unique elements that are present in that particular set, right? Fantastic. Now this was about the built-in data structures. We checked out list, we checked out uh, dictionaries, we checked out tuples, and we also checked out sets, right? Uh, remember the brackets, remember what's immutable, and understand that for all of these data types, you do not have to install any sort of dependency to work with, right? Now, let's take a look at user-defined data structures. When the name itself suggests user-defined data structures, what are we trying to do here, right? 
for example, let's talk about the, uh, the, the data structure that you see on your screen right now, stack, right? Think about a stack of books. Again, a stack of books is shown on your screen right there. How would you uh, arrange, a, uh, arrange a couple of books? Let's just say you have 10 books. How would you arrange it in the form of a stack if you just had to put it on one top of the other, right? I'll repeat that. So how would you arrange books in a stack, right? You would obviously take it and put it one on top of the other. Now, uh, this actually has a principle of approach and how you are actually accessing and removing uh, elements, or in this case, books, right? If you've kept all those books on the ground, or maybe on your bed, or maybe on your table, there's only one way that you can uh, have complete access to the book. That is the top book, right? You can uh, you have one, two books, and you can access the top one, and you can start uh, picking up the book from the top to the bottom, right? This concept is called as last in, first out, or in short, you might have already heard about it. It's called as LIFO, right? So if I have a stack of books or if I have a stack of elements in Python, what can I do with it? Well, you can actually add any sort of data you require to the stack, remove uh, any sort of data. You can uh, access it, change it, modify it, work with. When you're adding an element into a stack, the operation is called as pushing. And when you're removing a data element from a stack or in fact, even a queue as well, it's called as popping the operation that goes into it, right? But one thing, ladies and gentlemen, you have to think about a stack is that once you've stacked it on the ground, on your bed, uh, you know, beat on the table or wherever it is, you cannot start pulling out books from the last, right? You have to hold everything else and manually yank it out forcefully. So this concept does not apply here in Python. So the data access, if you, if you want to remove the third book on your screen, if you have to remove this book on your screen, you basically have to remove the first one, remove the second one, remove the third book, and then put these back into its place, right? So it's not like you'll just uh, divide it into two things, pull that book out and put it back again, like how you would probably see uh, in a cartoon or so that's not how it works if you want a concept that works in that way the next uh, user defined data structure will be pleasing to you guys uh, because this is a queue uh, a queue data structure is something that uh, literally every one of you guys watching this particular video in fact all of us when i say including me have seen and either been a part of a queue or of course you know we know how it works right so queues are again uh, used in real life a lot the principle here is slightly different from the stack here we use this concept called as FIFO, first in, first out, right? That's how an actual queue works. Whoever comes first gets priority, they get served, and then they go out and the next person walks in, right? Uh, you can see the uh, you can see the effect on the image that's shown on your screen right now. Now, whenever you're taking a look at queues though, uh, maybe let's just say the fourth person in this queue forgot her car keys or forgot her mobile for anything. Can she just walk out of the queue from the back as well? Is it possible? Well, of course it is possible, right? Uh, uh, the advantage of queue uh, compared to stack is that here, uh, operations can be performed both from the front and the back. Uh, when I say uh, front and the back, what I'm trying to mean is the head and the tail, right? For example, the head of the queue is the first person who was, uh, who was there to be attended to, right? The tail of the queue will involve what? it will involve the last person in that queue. So basically, including all of these things, operations can be performed either from the top or you can actually take the tail section and you can start either removing data or adding data from there as well. So this is how a general queue works. And uh, when you're thinking about implementation in Python as well, remember one thing, FIFO, first in, first out. So depending on your object axis, depending on what's actually required, you will be either thinking of using stacks or queues in most of these situations, right? Now that we're clear with stacks and queues, uh, I'm gonna take a look at another interesting data structure here, another user-defined data structure here. It's called as trees, right? Now, when we've been talking about these user-defined data structures, what we're trying to do is we're trying to use the syntax and the logic of Python to build ourselves our own data structure. That is the reason why all of these data structures are called user-defined data structures. I am sure you guys figured that out by now, right? Fantastic, right? So when we're talking about a tree data structure, again, think of an actual tree, right? Uh, in an actual tree, you find root, you find the leaves, and of course you find, uh, you know, all the branches and all of that. Now try to see if you can take a look at the image on your left and find any of those, right? Let me help you out. This one, uh, the node, this is uh, a top node. Uh, basically from this particular node, we have all the other nodes that are coming out, right? So this can be considered as a root. This can be considered as the primary. And from that, whenever you see every other node into it, there is a concept of, uh, uh, you know, the parent relationships that we build here. For example, uh, two and three, the nodes two and three have their parent as one because from one you got two and three, right? Similarly for two, now four and five become the children of two. Similarly for five, 
Similarly, for 5, a 6, 7, and 8 become the children of 5. Getting it right? Now, one important thing that you really have to understand is that uh, when you're working from the root node all the way to the leaf nodes, now what I mean by leaf nodes is basically all these nodes which do not have another connector node. Let's take a look at what they are. Are we having any other nodes connected to 3? No. So that's a leaf node. Similarly for 4, similarly for 6, similarly for 7 and 8, right? So most of the results of these computations that we perform when using a tree data structure usually lies in these leaf nodes aspect of it, right? They are the last nodes, but hey, in our case, they are some really important nodes that we are going to have to use, right? So breaking up a problem into a solution where you require a data structure which needs to be broken down in a compounded form, right? So if you have, uh, if you have a very complex data set and you're going to break it into modular chunks uh, and use it as a solution. Eventually, one of those modules will give you a solution. The tree data structure is exactly what you guys should use, right? Fantastic. The next data structure that we're going to take a look at is the graph data structure. Now, again, we've been using graphs and I'm sure you guys have seen graphs, you've worked on graphs, be it school, be it college, or you guys might have seen the rise in the coronavirus spread. That's a graph as well, right? So, uh, so we're talking about graph as a data visualization entity there. But in terms of Python, what are we doing? Well, here graph is a data structure, which basically has a structure, which is very similar to a tree. But then the working of a graph is very different because this sometimes is a closed loop structure, which has a collection of nodes and edges. Now you already know what are the nodes, right? So what are the nodes that you see on your screen right now? 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. What are the edges that you see on your screen right now? Well, in between zero and one, there is a, a, an edge. Between zero and four, there is an edge. Between four and one, there is an edge, right? Now, even though I directly do not have an edge from four to two, uh, we go through three and we still have an edge there, right? This is the concept of nodes. Uh, you know, nodes are also called as vertices in case that's what you might have learned in your school or college. Or in fact, edges are also called as arcs, right? So regarding vertices, arcs, nodes, edges, you have to understand uh, and you have to make sure that you do not get confused in these concepts. So as I told you, a graph is a closed connection of all of these uh, nodes and edges. So can I have an, can I have n number of nodes here? If I'm talking about a graph data structure in Python, it has to consist of a finite set of nodes and edges. Only then it is called as a graph data structure, right? Um, now think about a fantastic example of where this exact data structure is used. In fact, it's Facebook. Facebook is a fantastic social media that all of us, if not most of us know and use. How do you think each of the individual people present in the Facebook's network get connected to others, right? When there is a connection from one person to another, uh, think of it as an edge. But then these two people sitting uh, in correlation with what we're discussing right now are the nodes, right? So you have nodes, you have edges. And now think about all the billions of people that are on Facebook, right? So it just becomes an entirely uh, different uh, network. It, com it becomes a very super uh, complex intertwined web. But then I had to really simplify it for you to talk to you about graph in in, uh, uh, in, in terms of Facebook, right? But yes, this is used in Facebook. And uh, if you break it down to its most simplest levels, you definitely will see this data structure used there and in thousands of other places, I'm sure. Right, guys. Now, I have one more bonus data structure that I want to talk to you about. This is, again, the favorite of a lot of interviewers out there. So if you're a non-technical person who's had a chance to attend a technical interview, there is a very good chance you'll be quizzed on, first of all, everything that we have learned until now. Secondly, there's a good chance there's a question that's going to come up uh, if you're looking for a Python, if you're looking for a career in Python, C, C++, C Sharp or Java, 99% of the time they're going to ask you a question saying what are linked lists. Right. So to answer that question, linked list is another user defined data structure that we have uh, here in Python. Of course, we do not have native support for a linked list in Python, as in uh, we just saw how we can work with lists, how we can work with uh, sets and all of those. Right. We have a valid syntax to use that. But to implement linked list in terms of Python, you actually do not have it in the standard library. So you have to use functions, you have to use other lists and you have to use manual logic to actually implement a linked list. First of all, what is a linked list? Well, a linked list is basically a connection of elements uh, tied up in a chain structure, right? It's basically linked. Again, look, the answer lies in the name of the data structure itself. A linked list is basically a sequence of elements that are connected to each other in a way where you can move around and access one or the other element as and when required. Now, if I have three elements that you can see on your screen, right? 5, 10, and 20, how, how do I even know that the location that holds the value 5 is able to talk 
talk to the value 10, right? This is where a simple concept of pointers are used. I am sure you guys know what pointers are, right? Pointers are nothing but the simple addressing system that we use, uh, the address that we attach to a variable so that even though we do not know the value or where the value lies, uh, as soon as we have the address in our hand, the second part of what I just said uh, will negate itself. We will have an address. We know where that particular element 5, 10 or 20 exists, right? So uh, if you just take this uh, particular entity here 5 and there will be another criteria here called as next. So next is basically the name of the pointer. You would point that to where the data element of 10 exists. That is how uh, the linked list works. Again, there's multiple types of linked list. There's a single linked list, there's doubly linked list, uh, uh, you know, there's a circular linked list. So there's many, many types and it can get really complex. But one thing that uh, we've seen a lot is that uh, in terms of Python, linked lists are not super popular because you again have a lot of other data structures uh, that you can try to use and you, you can try to have, you can build the same application uh, using something else uh, where uh, you know, a linked list might have been a good fit, right? So implementation has to be done manually, but then uh, even though it has to be done manually, even though it's not in standard library, this is a super important data structure that again uh, is used, asked and worked with by all uh, the professionals out there. So make sure you guys know your linked lists, right? Fantastic guys. Now let's just summarize everything that we have learned on this particular video quickly, right? We started out by taking a look at and understanding all uh, about data structures, you know, what is a data structure? why it is required, how we go on to use it and all of that. Then we took a look at understanding uh, in fact, what uh, the built-in data structures in Python are. Then we took a look at all the user-defined data structures and also we discussed one bonus data structures, which is linked list, right? So to revisit some of the important points, uh, I have I have uh, this particular uh, chart on your screen right now, right? So this is a cheat code that, you know, you can take a picture of or you can take a screenshot of or you can revisit it anytime you want, right? Uh, a list basically is represented using what? Using square braces. And a dictionary is represented by what? A key value pair and flower braces. What about a tuple? A tuple is basically represented using round braces or parentheses as it's called. And a set again is represented by flower braces, but this time we do not have any sort of key value pairs, right? All of this is wonderful, but one important point that you have to keep in your mind is about a tuple, right? A tuple is an immutable data type, just like int, float, char, uh, string, or any other data types that you might have. So that you know you cannot modify how that particular data type works, right? So for that particular uh, usage, we have all the other user-defined data structures like stack, queues, trees, graphs, linked lists, and more. So guys, I hope everything that we've covered in this particular video has been clear to all of you all. Data structures are super important, be it in Python or in fact any other programming language as well. Make sure you guys are super strong uh, in data structures because once you understand this concept, later on where uh, later on when you're working on projects where this is used everywhere, it'll make your life very, very simple. Right? Fantastic, guys. If you have any other discussion or any other comments or suggestions or you think about any other data structure that, might, that should have made it on this list, guys, head to the comment section and definitely let us know. Let's take up this conversation there. Right? My name is Anirudh Rao. Thank you so much for watching. Watching, I'll see you on the next one. I want to introduce you to Great Learning Academy. This is a free initiative by Great Learning where you can have access to over 200 plus courses with 1000 plus hours of free content on all of the trending high demand domains absolutely free. Register now to complete the course and get your free certificate of completion as well. Check out the link in the description box of the video below for more details. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. This is done to make sure you do not miss out on any of the new updates or video releases from Great Learning. And of course, guys, if you enjoy this video, show us some love and do like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, right? So make sure you share this video with your friends, colleague and everyone who can make use of it. And at the end of it, make sure to comment on the video if you have any queries or any suggestions and I'll be more than happy to respond to all of your comments.